So now, please welcome the man of the hour for his Tuesday talk, Mr. Ben Ridge. Good afternoon. For the past six years, I have traveled across the U.S. on my Zero SR electric motorcycle. I spent my whole life, I spent years of my life pursuing the goal of making the world a better place by showing people how to move away from gas-powered vehicles to electric vehicles, also known as EVs. And today, I'm going to share with you what I've done and why I do it. Hiking in the mountains of New Hampshire with my father are some of my favorite childhood memories. We would traverse the White Mountains together, or with our Boy Scout troop, always being prepared, and he would point out nature's beauty while we picked up other people's garbage along the way. Not only did we try to leave no trace, but we were always seeking to leave the place better than we found it, a habit that became a principle. Here are some photos of my dad and me outdoors. In the photo to the left, you can see childhood Mr. Rich proudly showing the trash I picked up. To the right is my favorite photo of my dad and me. We had hiked in the Shenandoahs to a waterfall, and I like this photo so much because one of the lenses of his glasses fell out, and so he could only see half see the beautiful waterfall we had just hiked to. He just turned 80 last year, and we still enjoy a good walk in the woods. Those lessons of leaving a place better than you found it stuck with me. I continued to hike and continued to pick up other people's trash along the way, leaving mountains and streams better than how I found them. It was a chore that became a habit that became a principle. To the left, you see a photo. I'm working at uh, the Patterson Habitat for Humanity, and on the right was one of the Surfrider beach cleanups. As time progressed, it became evident that there were many challenges we faced that involved people leaving the planet worse than they found it. We're putting too much CO2 into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels. We have a wasteful society that uses, utilizes single-use items instead of buying things that last. And we have put so much plastic into our water supply that it's now likely that every one of us has microplastics in our stomachs. I wanted to incorporate the idea of leaving the world better than I found it in my life. So I started looking for ways to make a difference. I buy, thing that, I buy things that last a long time. For example, my winter coat was purchased in 1990. It will turn 30 years old next year. Nice. I've been told that it's going to be vintage pretty soon. I've installed water-saving devices in my kitchen and bathroom, so my water use is about half of what other Americans use, and I ride an electric motorcycle that allows me to travel using renewable energy. But this wasn't enough. Making changes in my personal life was a good start, but there had to be a way to make a bigger difference. Now at the same time I was making sustainable life choices, I discovered a passion for swing dancing. In my early 20s, I learned Looney Hop. Lindy Hop is the original swing dance named after Charles Lindbergh hopping across the Atlantic in 1927. And I began traveling to swing dance events across the country. While going to workshops, exchanges, competitions, I was meeting all sorts of fascinating people. It wasn't unusual to dance with someone from Boston, followed by a person from Orlando, then Seattle or Minneapolis. These people became my community. In the early 2000s, while living in Pittsburgh, my dance partner and I started teaching and competing in local, national, and international competitions, each time meeting people who shared the same passion for swing dance, and all the while meeting people who would become lifelong friends. We formed a troupe we called the Scat Cats and performed locally in Pittsburgh. Here are some photos of my dance partner and me performing in Pittsburgh. She was, and still is, one of my closest, most trusted friends. I developed a love of taking road trips and traveled as far as my car would take me almost every weekend for several years. Now, be the change you wish to see in the world. This is paraphrased from Mahatma Gandhi, and I found myself wanting to make a bigger impact, but how? By daring greatly. In 2013, I re received a phone call from a woman who was putting together a group of electric vehicle drivers to cross the US in 44 days, all electric. It was a bold proposition in 2013. EV charging stations were few and far between, but I decided to push past my fears and join the adventure. So in my electric motorcycle, I joined people driving a Nissan Leaf, an electric scooter, 
an electric bicycle, and we traveled from Charleston, South Carolina, to Google headquarters in Mountain View, California. It was an amazing journey, filled with incredible landscapes and frustrating logistics. But it gave me a sense that I was making a dis difference. We met hundreds of people who didn't even know electric motorcycles existed, and who now were one step closer to looking into EVs as a serious mode of transportation. We made a documentary movie about it called Kick Gas, and you can find it on video. Be really careful with the pronunciation of that, by the way. This is a map of our trip. There we go. Uh, this is a map of the 4,500 mile trip we wrote. We traveled over the summer from Charleston to Google headquarters. And here's a quick clip from the movie uh, while we were on Route 66. On the Ride the Future tour, we're traveling down Route 66. And uh, we came to Lucille's gas station. And Lucille's gas station is one of the few gas stations along Route 66. This one was built in 1927. And at that time, gas stations were very rare. To be able to travel from Chicago all the way to Los Angeles, you needed to have gas stations all the way around. Well, this was the first time anyone had done this. And uh, right now, in 2013, we have a similar situation with charging stations and electric cars. So we're kind of repeating history. Everything suddenly changes, amazing. <laughs> Don't worry, the rest of the movie is a lot more riding video and a lot less Mr. Rich talking. Um, and you may have caught the rock that actually hit the camera lens uh, as I was peeling out. So, down yeah, Route 66, and uh, I can technology. After that, I decided to set out on my own and cross the country solo on my electric motorcycle. In 2014, I had to charge about one and a half times as long as I rode. It was slow going, and I traveled, I still traveled over 300 miles a day, visiting swing dancing friends, going to a family wedding, and spreading the word about EVs. Then in 2015, I wanted to make a bigger impact by getting some publicity for electric vehicles. So I did a three country tour, riding from New Jersey to Mexico, then up to Montreal, Canada. I could charge a little faster, but was still charging longer than I was riding. I wrote articles for a website called Inside EVs, wrote a blog, took photos, and made videos every day. There was plenty of time while my bike was charging. This was good, but most of the people who read that website already drove EVs. I wanted to get the word out to everyone else, so I took a risk and contacted several motorcycle magazines to see if they would print a story about my three country tour. Four of them, never got back to me. I felt rejected. I felt like a failure. All of that effort and not a single magazine was interested in this unique journey. Then one day, the American Motorcyclist Association contacted me and said they wanted my journey for their cover story. I was elated. This is a magazine with a quarter of a million subscribers. But I was also scared because I had to write the article. My fears crept up on me again. What if my writing wasn't good enough and they rejected my article? So I had to push through my self-doubt. I wrote a few drafts, ran it by some friends, and submitted the article. They published it, and it felt like a victory for EVs everywhere. In 2016, there were only 15 states between me and becoming the first person to ride an electric motorcycle through all the lower 48 states. Of course, it's not states like Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire. It was all the big states out west. Charging time was down to about half my riding time, so I could cover more ground each day. On the road, I met bikers who had never seen an electric motorcycle, and they asked questions about riding electric. With each conversation, I was making a difference. On July 12, 2016, I became the first person to ride through all the lower 48 states. It was a huge relief to accomplish that goal. Here are a few of the state signs I collected along the way. I can't overstate how hard it was to collect these. You knew it was coming. <laughs> to give you a sense of what a day on the road was like, I have a video uh, of the day on which I traveled 525 miles in one day from Denver, Colorado to Park City, Utah. Please excuse a little bit of the audio in the clip. The wind hit the microphone a bit. All right, it is July 1st. Time to go from Denver, Colorado to Park City, Utah. Here we go. 
Starting out six years ago, I had no idea my efforts would impact so many people this way. And I've tried to leave everywhere I visited a little better than I found it. So now you've heard about how much electric motorcycles and swing dancing mean to me. And so I'd like to share with you a bit of the dance that has given me so many friendships and opportunities that I wouldn't otherwise have. Joining me on the stage is my dance partner, Akemi Kinukawa. Please welcome. who is not only an excellent dancer, but also a trusted friend. Enjoy. That's all contagion That's me, I'm very jealous 
and do it. All right. So, it takes a lot of energy. <laughs> really good exercise. So, find your passion. Pursue it with everything you've got. Dedicate yourself to the greater good, and you'll live a life filled with meaning. And you'll never be lonely, and you'll leave the world a better place than you found it. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you very much.